name is Lucy K. Hins and I'm in the Fashionistas 4-H Club. This is my fifth year doing a demonstration. Do you want to impress your family by knowing how to make a homemade pie crust? Well, I'm here today to show you how. Before I begin my demonstration, I want you to know that I've washed my hands and I'm wearing an apron I made previously in 4-H. The ingredients you'll need for this demonstration are salt, flour, butter, and water. The tools you'll need for this demonstration are an 8 or 9 inch pie plate, two large mixing bowls, a sifter, a cutting board, and a rolling pin. Since I was supposed to do my demonstration off-site, I also have wax paper laid out, I have my water and a thermos, and I've put my flour and my salt that is already pre-measured in here, in these containers. If I was at home, I would need the dry measuring cups, but I don't need them here, so, yeah. Um, the first step in my demonstration is to take one large mixing bowl and a sifter, and I'm going to take my one cup of flour, which I already pre-measured, and I'm going to lightly pour it into the sifter so that I can get all the flour. Next, I'm going to sift the flour into the large mixing bowl. I want to sift it um, softly because I don't want the flour to go everywhere. And the reason that we sift the flour is to get rid of any of the clumps that are in the flour because you don't want a big pile of flour in your dough. And there's different sifters that look differently. This is just the one I have. There can be like a newer model, but any sifter will work. So after that, all that's gone, I'm just going to shake it. And then I have sifted flour. Next, I'm going to take my pre-measured salt and I'm going to take my other large mixing bowl. I'm going to add my salt to my sifted flour. Then I'm going to sift the salt and the flour, or my dry ingredients, together. And the reason that I'm going to mix my dry ingredients together is because I want to mix the salt and the flour together. So then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to slowly and softly do it so it gets all the clumps out. And all of these ingredients I'm using can be found at a local grocery store. So um, no need to like go anywhere crazy. You can just find it's only four. You can find it at your local grocery store. Now that I'm done with the sifter. I'm gonna take my butter, and to measure the butter, I'm gonna take a knife. And on the butter, you can see that it has these measurements: one to eight tablespoons. And I need two tablespoons of butter. So right now I'm on the five. So I'm gonna cut to the end of the six. And I'm just going to kind of indent it a little bit. I'm not cutting through. But I'm indenting it like that. And then when I open the butter, I can still see the indentation. So I'm just going to finish cutting there. And add the butter to my dry ingredient mixture. And then you can use the rest of the butter for anything. Um, some people, after they're done baking their pie crust, they melt butter and they put it on top. I'm not going to be doing that today, but that's totally something you can do. And some people don't use butter for this. They can use Crisco, or they can use half butter and half Crisco. But I'm going to be using butter today, because that's how my project leader told us. That's what my project leader told us to do. And I t then I take two knives, or some people use a spatula for this. And I'm going to chop the butter up, and I just want to um, make the butter into really small pieces so it can mix evenly and well together with the other dry ingredients. And after I do this, I'm going to scrape off all the extra butter. I'm going to take my water. This is just the dry ingredient measure. These are the uh, measuring cups. And I'm going to take um, my tablespoon one. And I'm going to take um, two to four tablespoons of water. And the reason that it's two to four tablespoons and not two, three, or four, like a certain measurement, is because it might vary in between your dough. And it doesn't mean anything's like wrong with it if you need more or if you need less and you did something wrong. It's just how like the dough is. And when I measure my water, I so normally if I was home, I would just use like the faucet or something. But since I plan to do this off-site, I already prepared it like that. I tilt my thermos and I dunk my um, tablespoon in there. And then I just lift it up because I want to get a full tablespoon. 
And I'm just going to take another one, just do the same thing I just explained, and add it to the mixture. And another, um, I'm using a fork for this process, but some people like to use um, spatulas or a spoon. It's really just whatever you want to use or whatever's handy. So I can kind of see now that the mixture is um, kind of forming a little bit. So um, just because I want to save as much time as possible, um, I've already pre-made the dough. So I'm just going to show you like a little bit like it's... It's supposed to turn into a ball, so it looks like this. You can kind of see like the pieces forming. And if I was to finish making this, I would use my hand. I might add more water, but I would use my hands to start forming a dough, start forming a ball with the dough. But since I'm not, I'm just going to put this aside and take my pre-made dough. And I made this dough yesterday, so it's pretty fresh. So, and I'm just going to, so after you would finish that, you would cup your dough in your hands to make it a circular. This one's already pretty circular, so it's not that big of a deal, but I would want to circular it. Next, I'm going to put my dough aside, and I have my wax paper down so it's clean. I'm going to take my cutting board and my roller, and I have some extra flour over here. I'm just going to put some flour on the cutting board. And I'm just going to sprinkle some on the ruler. This is another. So we have to use our hands for this. So this you can use your you use your hands a lot in this demonstration to mix the dough. I just didn't do that, but you will need your hands. You will need to be able to use your hands. And we're not. We're just um, in this part. I'm trying to make sure that the dough does not stick to the cutting board and or the ruler. That's why we put that down. So yeah. All right. So now that's all good. Next, I'm going to take my dough, I'm just going to push it down a little bit, and then I'm going to roll it with my rolling pin. So, I'm trying to roll it so it's one-eighth of an inch thick. So, I roll it up, and I roll it sideways. And my dough is a little hard, so it might be a little harder to roll it. But your dough will be freshly made, so it'll be easier to do this. Mine's just a little hard. So that's why it's just taking me a little bit longer. Um, so again, with the, um, the water, or if your dough is hard as mine, you just made it. You didn't do anything wrong. It might just be that way. It's not, oh, I did something wrong. It's hard. That's just what how it's like. So if yours is hard, don't worry about it. It's not that big deal. I'm going to roll it up, upwards, and outwards. So, I kind of see that it's a little thin, and I just want to make sure that it's even on all sides. And if you're doing it one way and it's not working, you can totally switch it. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so, now I'm just going to check in. I can see that it's one eighth of an inch, and if it's too thin, then um, it'll just crumble and if it's too thick it won't bake. So you really want to make sure that it's even. Okay. And it's okay if one side is longer than the other, but they should be relatively the same. So next I'm going to take my, I have an 8 inch pan pl pie plate here. So I'm just going to measure and I can clearly see that I've got enough. So then I'm going to take, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to lightly fold this in half. Now when I do this, I'm not pressing down the dough to make it crease it. I'm just folding it, and I'm folding it up so it looks like this. I didn't press this down to really, because if I press it down, then it'll come together. I don't want it to come together. I just want it to be um, usable. So, I have my pie plate, and I'm going to pick the top right-hand corner, because that's just how I folded it, and I'm going to put the dough over the side. And then I'm going to open it downwards, so now half, half the pie plate is covered. Then if I turn it, if I open it up the full length, and I just move it a little bit, now the whole pie plate is covered. So that's what that did. It was just kind of a way to transport it. And I just find that it's just easier to do it like that. So now I'm just adjusting the um, uh, crust, the dough so that it it's even on all sides 
And sometimes, like, I have a little here, and I know there's going to be a lot over here. If I just push this together, then that's good. So, it's pretty good. Now, I'm just going to lightly push it down, because I don't want there to be any air bubbles in this. And I'm just going to make, like, little indentations with my fingers. So, it's all, so this is what it looks like. Next, I'm going to take a knife. And I'm going to cut downwards on the pie crust. And this is to get rid of any of the extra dough. So. And you don't want to cut too um, close because then it will be really um, a short crust. So this is what I have. And if you can see that it's like a big piece, go for, um, feel free to just take it off. It'll just be easier in the long run. So, I can clearly, like, maybe my knife didn't get this, but I can see that's really long. So, I, and, like, if there's, like, a straggler here or there, like, this is kind of long. And then, here you can kind of see that it's kind of, like, um, it's thin over there, and I want it to be evenly sized. So, I'm just going to take some F extra dough, and it's okay to have a lot of extra dough. It's okay to have not a lot of extra dough. It really just depended on how you did it all. It doesn't mean you did it wrong. It's just how it is. So I'm just going to add the dough over here. So it's even. Alright. Next up. Any of the extra dough that you have on the crust, just fold it in. So anything you didn't cut, fold in because that will be used for the edge of the crust. And with the edge of the crust, not everybody has to do an edge of the crust. You can leave it just like this. Um, just for my demonstration today, I'm going to show you how to do a crust edge. And with the pie plate, some pie plates might come with, a, like, this one. It shows you, like, it has this to show you, like, how to do it. And then there's some like this. It really doesn't matter which one you use. If you, like, maybe need more help with that, that's perfect. Maybe you think it's just going to be easier. It's totally up to you. So... Next, I'm going to take my thumb, my thumb and my finger, and I'm going to pinch this together to make a rim. So, just like that. Just pinching it. Pinching it. Pinching it. And we do this because this is just the rim that I chose to do. There's many different ones that you can choose to do. This is just the one I'm doing today. And when I pinch this, you might notice that I'm kind of losing some crust in some areas. That's totally okay. And then after we finish doing this, I, so when I pinched it, I can feel that it's kind of thin here. And then when I bake it, it won't turn out right, so I just can add more dough to fix it. This is what we get. So after we pinch it, this is what we're looking with. We're left with. So, I'm just going to, like, fill in some extra dough I have because you don't want to waste the dough. If you feel that you have a ton of dough left, like enough to make another pie crust, you can go ahead and make another one. Really, just whatever you think you, enough you have left, that'll work. So, I'm just going to go by and make sure that this is good. And then over here. Alright, so this is what I have when I'm done. The edges, nice and good. And I'm going to take a, my fork, like it's okay if it's dirty. I'm just going to poke holes in the crust. And the reason that we poke holes in the crust is to be sure that the crust can breathe. Sometimes when you get a bubble, you can get bubbles in your crust. And bubbles, we just had one the other day when we were practicing. They're not that hard to get out. You just like poke it and it'll go out. But just to kind of prevent that. And I like to um, poke holes along the edges of the crust. Because I just think that's where the most bubbles come in. Again, you don't want to chop your crust up so it's nothing in the middle. So after I finish everything, this is what I have left. And then you put this in the oven at the temperature 350 degrees for 10 minutes or until it's golden brown. And then some people put um, butter on top of it. I personally don't, but it's really up to you. I know some people do, some people don't. It's really just a preference. Um, I got my information from this Cornell Cooperative Extensions book that we did. 
And this is a pie crust that um, I made fresh yesterday. And you can kind of see that there's a bubble in it, but we just poke a hole, it's not that bad. So this is what you'll kind of get when you finish. So bake that, it's good. And that one's not really golden or brown, but we know that it was 10 minutes, so it's totally okay. In conclusion, the ingredients you'll need to make a one crust pie shell are two to four tablespoons of water, a half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of flour, and two tablespoons of butter. Thank you for your time, and I hope everything's well.